Hey guys, how's it going? It is me, Saber, doing another quick vid, which is a different format for those who don't know. I uh, just got some notes here, some bullet points, and uh, I'll be going off of that. So I'm probably gonna sound a little bit different, but that's just how I do these videos. So Infinity Train is a mini series on Cartoon Network, which is something that doesn't happen too often for the network. If I'm correct, there've only been like two mini series ever aired on Cartoon Network. One being Over the Garden Wall, which is like my favorite thing they've ever made, ever. And then the other being like this weird rock and roll, like royalty thing. I, I don't know, I, I never watched it. So it was really cool to hear that they were gonna do another mini series. If it's anything like Over the Garden Wall, then it's gonna be fantastic. Now, as far as the origins of Infinity Train goes, it was created by a guy named Owen Dennis. He was a storyboard artist and writer for Regular Show. You also got some other awesome people who worked on the Infinity Train pilot, such as Nick Cross, who worked on Over the Garden Wall, and then Randy Myers, who worked on Powerpuff Girls and Samurai Jack. The pilot was put on YouTube and came out in 2016 and did very well. I think it got like 3 million views or something like that. So a lot of people were saying, give this show a full series which didn't happen. Instead, it was a miniseries, and that is totally fine with me. Like, a, a miniseries can be very good or very bad. Just, it, it all depends on how they execute it. For Over the Garden Wall, uh, I think it was supposed to be a full series, but then they're like, nah, let's just do a miniseries. Let's just tell our story and get on with it. And I like that uh, mini series. It, it kind of forces people to have more focus and, and stay like trim with their story, which is exactly what happens here for Infinity Train. I, I, I'm gonna mention spoilers, not now, but later in the video. So the synopsis is Tulip, who is our main character. She's like, I think like 13 or 14 or something like that. And she uh, is just an average girl, kind of a nerd. Um, she is part of a family that's going that, that actually has been divorced the parents and you see how it's really hasn't sit well with her how uh, the divorce still causes problems and how she's struggling with it uh, then we see her get sucked into this train that teleports her to like another dimension and every cart of the train is a different world where you got like a cart that's like a turtle civilization, one that is a ball pit, one that is like <laughs> pencils. It, it reminds me a lot of Rick and Morty and the absurdity of it all. And it also very much so reminds me of Adventure Time, which had like not a verbatim, this a similar concept, but kind of close where there's an episode where Finn goes onto this train where he can like adventure forever in Ray Dungeons. So I see the similarities with that. That being said, uh, Tulip is lost. She has this weird number thing on her hand. She doesn't know what it means. She runs into this white orb robot that has a split personality, one that's optimistic, one that's pessimistic. And then she eventually runs into this talking corgi. So it, it's, it's a fictional fantasy world. Uh, I was on the fence of whether it qualifies as science fiction, kind of. There's some robots in this series. Uh, what caught me off guard, though, was that it, it it's kind of um, a bit of horror uh, genre is thrown in there. And, and that was welcomed. I love horror. I, I love what Over the Garden Wall did with horror and how, like, you've got this monster and multiple ghosts and demons in that series. And, and this show, I wouldn't say it's necessarily, like, ghosts and demons, but that's, that's why I'm on the fence with the sci-fi. It's like fantasy, sci-fi, horror. And that's really cool for our Cartoon Network show. It's also cool that this show maintained a very uh, serious, mature vibe. Like, I, it, it didn't feel pandering to children. It's something where uh, a, a person uh, can really enjoy this regardless of their age. Maybe little kids might be freaked out by it, but like, as an adult, I'm watching this and I was floored with how relatable it is. <laughs> what are you singing? It's a wacky getting chased song. I won't hit spoilers just yet. Um, I guess talking about the world building. So again, uh, it's a giant massive train in this desert world and Tulip, 
and her friends are going from cart to cart, trying to, to get to the front of the train to talk to the conductor, thinking that the conductor might be able to get Tulip back home. So Tulip is thrown feet first into this world without being asked. She's trying to find her way home, trying to figure out what things, how things work and what's going on. And that's good for like a, a protagonist to be just unaware of what's going on because it allows the audience to also walk with the character and learn the ropes of what the setting is. And, and that's good for world building, especially when every single card is potentially something completely random. It also kind of explains the narrative of it, of it all, like the narrative of what each cart means and how they come into being and just the, the rules of this world and how things operate. It, it, there are fun designs, uh, fun characters, creepy characters. Uh, the, the robot character, the white orb that has a split personality, reminds me a lot of the uh, robot from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I thought that was kind of funny. There's probably some inspiration behind that. Maybe, I don't know. There's fun music. Um, it's kind of got a bit of a synth vibe to it. I'm not good at talking about music, so I might be completely wrong, but it was this, this atmospheric music that really sets the mood, and I appreciate that. So here we go. Um, spoilers. I'm not going to reveal the main, like, ending of the show, but I, this theme plays a huge role in the story. Uh, it's about suppression. It's about uh, how Tulip is a damaged child because she's an only child. Uh, like I said, her, her parents are divorced and she's very much so damaged because of it and still has healing to do. And that's essentially the journey. You see how Tulip time and time again faces different kind of matchups and, and foes and situations where in a way she's coming around about her parents' uh, divorce. Uh, one episode in particular really spoke to me because she she's like suppressing memories and kind of altering them only to realize that there were never really good times. Times were hard and she tried to put that in a box and hide it. But no, I mean, she came face to face with the reality of it all. And, and for those who don't know, my, my parents got divorced when I was in like a freshman in high school. It's probably the most like, I mean, I've, I live a pretty chilled out life, but that's like the most severe thing that ever happened to me. And uh, the show is relatable that way. I imagine many of my viewers come from divorced households. And uh, if you especially struggled as a child going through your parents divorce, I highly recommend this show it, it's something where you don't really see divorce mentioned in like cartoons i think in the weekenders it was the the tito or tyler whatever the main blonde boy from the weekenders is his mother was divorced uh, as told by ginger her parents are divorced and it's rare you can it's rare to see that brought up because i guess it makes people feel uncomfortable and this show takes it head on that is what they're talking about it's about divorce it's about coming face to face with these pains of suppressing memory and how to address them, how to not necessarily get rid of them, but to live with it. And the theme is so mature and tied in with the science fiction fantasy horror element of it all is great. I, I love what this show was telling, what, what the story, the main story about it all. And it surprised me because in the first episode, it's it. it it hits you with a very serious message of divorce, of, of a broken family, and how Tulip is hurting because of it. And because it's a mini series, it has to keep the story moving along quickly. There's no time to, you know, waste on like a slice of life episode, which th there are like the lighthearted episodes that get you set it, settled into the world. But then ever present in the background is Tulip and how she's damaged and how her parents' divorce haunts her. So uh, that being said, I would say that Over the Garden Wall is still my favorite thing that Cartoon Network has ever aired. Uh, I prefer it over Infinity Train, but at the same time, Infinity Train speaks to me on a profound level since I can relate to it. I think Over the Garden Wall did a better job with its characters and with the setting. Infinity Train felt a bit more rushed, if that makes any sense. And I'm not saying that Infinity Train is bad. Again, I highly recommend it. It's on the Cartoon Network app. You can catch it on television, I believe. 
uh, and, and probably it might be on maybe Cartoon Network's YouTube channel. Check it out. I loved it. It's good. It's cool to see this kind of caliber of storytelling, especially from Cartoon Network, especially something for kids where it's not too dark, but also not pandering to them. Uh, and, and as an adult, it's also a fun story and has a deep message. So check out Infinity Train. Um, you can follow Owen Dennis on Twitter. I think, I don't know what's going to happen. I think this was a one and done thing, so I don't expect there to be another season. But uh, I, I want to see creators like him and other people. I want to see them keep providing these kinds of stories because they're great. And I want to see more of that. So tell me what you all think in the comments and uh, I'll see you all next time. Bye.